If you're looking for inspiration for your next decorating project, then put down that remote. Today on For Your Home, I've got great ideas for your dining room, your master suite, your kids room, and even a play area. So get ready to be inspired on FYH. For Your Home is made possible by Anderson Hardwood, committed to producing distinctive, environmentally responsible hardwood flooring while helping to create a better planet for today and tomorrow. For more information, go to andersonfloors.com. Anderson, naturally. And by Ames. Ames True Timber has offered innovative landscape products since 1774, providing non-powered lawn and garden tools, wheelbarrows and lawn carts, watering products and decorative accessories, including planters. And by Custom Home Furnishings Academy, where the professionals learn to sew window treatments. For the past nine months, we have been building this great custom home. We have completed the construction stage and have started moving furniture into the spaces we created. The best laid plans can always be improved upon with a little paint, some fabric, and great furnishings. You don't have to be building a custom home to put some of these plans into action at your house. Now we're in the dining room of our home and if you look up, you'll see there are incredible details in here. We have a beamed ceiling and then the faux finish that Sherry and Summer created is just spectacular. We wanted it to look like antique silk wallpaper and it sure does. Now, one of the things you have to think about when you're working with a room that's this tall, of course, is your lighting. We selected a large chandelier for this room because it's such a big space and we hung it a little higher than normal because of its massive size. Now, we're also doing what you do at your house. Nobody can afford to throw out all their furniture and start new, so we're recycling and then adding a little new to it. The dining room table, it's an antique Chippendale table. We're just recycling it, it's beautiful, but the chairs that go with it are a little too heavy and a little too dark. So we decided instead that we would have some custom chairs created for here. I love these chairs. They have a great yellow and white fun fabric on them. And this little skirt along the bottom gives them a much more casual feel. Now, we didn't want to get rid of the Chippendale chairs, though, because we want to use them for additional seating and even at the heads of the table. So we simply recovered the seat cushion with the same fabric as we're using on the draperies. We're also recycling the rug we already had. It's an antique and it matches beautifully. Now, for the drapes, take a look at these. These are horizontal stripes, big five inch stripes. We used horizontal stripes because it widens out the room. Verticals would have made it seem way too tall in here. So think about that if you're trying to make a room look wider than it is tall. Now, a new piece of furniture that looks old is the hutch that we have in here. Now, it has great detail on the outside of it. It looks like an old antique French cabinet. 
And on the inside of it, the doors are also finished just as nicely. So if we decide that we want to create a great display in here with some antique dishes or holiday decor, we can leave these doors open and get the benefit of its full beauty. All we need to do now is add some colorful artwork and this dining room is a big hit. So think about your dining room at home, add some color, get some real life into that room, recycle and add a little new. The blue of the master suite turned out perfect. Now, it wasn't by accident. We tested it first. We painted some squares on the wall. We lived with them for a couple of days, and then we said, we love it, paint the whole place blue. Now, one of the great things about this room are the architectural details. Take a look at this ceiling. It's a great tray ceiling with layers and layers of molding. What a beautiful feature. We wanted to be able to call attention to that, so right in the center, we're using a chandelier, but we didn't want to use your typical chandelier with lots of crystals. We wanted to be a more contemporary, tailored, classic look. I think we accomplished it with that selection. Now on each side of the bed, I selected lamps that have a ginger jar shape to them. It's a kind of a crackled finish and the shades are white silk. Whenever you want a lot of light and you don't want to dull any of your colors down, always go for white shades. Plus, we're going to be using white linen drapes in here and they'll tie in beautifully. On the other side of the room, for lighting, we selected an aluminum lamp, and the shade on that's very classic. It has just a small band of black on the top and the bottom, ties in perfectly with our chandelier. And that's what decorating is all about, making everything tie in together, just thinking about those details. Now, we use furniture that is not your typical furniture in a lots of places in this house. And for the bedroom, we wanted to use a four-poster bed, but not the old country big rice bed something that's a little more contemporary. So I selected this bedroom furniture that has this great black finish on it and it has the frick work across the back and it still has the four post, but here's a great feature for this one. If you decide you don't want a tall post on the end, this unscrews as does this. The finial can move down low like this and you've got a whole different look for your bed. I love furniture that has a lot of versatility to it. Speaking of which, look at the piece I'm working with over here. Now, this is not intended to be used in a bedroom. This is designed for a dining room, for a break front. But for us, it's perfect. I always look at furniture by the scale, the purpose of, and its functionality, as well as its color and features. This one, if you open it up, it has felt lined drawers, which are of course intended for silverware. But for us, we're gonna use it to put jewelry in. On the ends of our table, there's a pull-out tray. You can set a coffee cup down here if you want to. And below that, there's a little flip-down drawer. There are outlets inside, which are perfect for plugging in maybe a warming tray in your bedroom, a coffee pot, recharging your cell phone, or your laptop if you're working in this room. I love it when we can find furniture that serves lots of purposes. Now, in a master bedroom, you always want to have seating, if at all possible. Even if your room is small, maybe you can find space for just one chair in a corner with a table and a lamp. For us, we were lucky. We had room for two chairs. But still, I didn't go big scale. I went to a smaller, more conservative size of club chair. The fabric I selected is a black and white, fun kind of animal print and we accented it with these brushed nickel nail heads. This ties in perfectly with the hardware on our cabinets. Again, it's tying it all back together and making it match. Now, if you don't have room for seating, think about incorporating a bench into your master bedroom. This bench has a leather top on it, so it's really durable. And benches are great because you can unpile pillows from your bed, maybe you know throw an afghan on the top of it, sit down and change your shoes, a lot of versatility. Now, for artwork for this room, we wanted to select something that was nice and serene and had a nice color scheme going to it. I love the paintings that we selected. This one especially, it is so inviting and relaxing to look at, and the colors worked beautifully. All three of these paintings just work with what we're trying to do. Now, we talked about architectural detail and how much we loved it in this room. Well, sometimes it can give you problems. For example, when Andy came in to hang the drapes for this room and put in the hardware, 
I said, let's take a look. We've got some real unusual molding up there. And that molding, we thought, well, we'll just ignore it and run the rod straight across. It didn't look good once we got it done. So instead, Andy said, let's put five and a half inch extenders up there. Let's bump it out with a piece of wood so we can totally clear that crown molding. And that will let our drapes fall nicely by the side. It will also allow us to get our side hardware level with that over our doorways. So a little bit more work for Andy, but for me, this means I don't have to rehem the drapes. I like that. See, there's always a silver lining for someone in a design project. Now, when you're doing your master bedroom, keep in mind relaxing, just a more reserved kind of space, colors that make you feel good, seating areas. And in this space, all we need to do is add some great bedding to this room, a few accessories, and I think we have created a great master retreat. Bedrooms are wonderful opportunities for your children to use their imagination. You know, I can certainly imagine myself sleeping like a princess in this room. You know, this room actually has three parts to it. It has a bedroom, a dressing room, and a bathroom. And we started off with this bed. I found this bed. I absolutely fell in love with it. It's a new bed, but it's made to look old, of course. And so that was what I was working with, but I had to tie in all three of the rooms and create a great space. So I collaborated with faux finisher Jennifer Serrano, and she had some great ideas. Jennifer, come in here, quit working, quit working. What are you doing Hi, in there? I'm just checking on my switch plates, make sure they're dry and get some of the last details. I know, and we've here. still got finishing touches to put on this room everywhere, but Jennifer has got great talent, and I can't take the credit for the theme of this room. I can take credit for the bed and going, uh-huh, uh-huh, a lot, but you came up with a theme so yes. tell us about it. Yes we came up with ballroom glam. We wanted to make sure that uh, Emily could grow into this room in the years to come and not just be stuck with a little six-year-old theme forever. Uh -huh. So uh, we created it to look more like a ballroom and feel a little more grown up. It is and it's away from that princess look but it still says princess right. as well. Okay now for the dressing room I have to say that this is really one of my favorite areas. Yes, yes. we wanted to, her to feel like a, she was in a boutique and just dressing up and getting all ready for the ready for the ball. Well, it's a great technique with the horizontal stripes and the little gold beads on it. I love that. And in the bathroom, did you use the same colors as you mm -hmm. did in the dressing room? Yes, the same colors. Believe it or not, it started out a dark, dark, bright pink. Yeah, I saw it at that level and my heart kind of went like, It was Whoa. pretty obnoxious. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And then we did um, what you call a strie. You just pull another color over it and use a, a brush and it um, softens the tones for you. Well, it certainly did the job in there and it was exactly what we needed. Mm -hmm. So now all the rooms tied in together with the same great faux finish for it. And our bed sets perfectly in the room. I think one of my favorite features though is the ceiling that you did in here because you know, you're know you in a bedroom so you're gonna be looking up a lot. Yep. And the ceiling is so fancy. Tell me how you created this look. Well, it's uh, first we've had to put the gold in there because you know every ballroom has a gold ceiling. Uh -huh. uh, the stencil is about six feet long, about four feet wide, and we glued about 400 Swarovski crystals all, oh over, all over it to give it a little bit of glitz and glam. It is just spectacular, but you do notice there is a big gaping hole in the middle of it, yeah. and that was because it needs a chandelier. It does. Every ballroom does. So your work is not done yet. Okay. I found the chandelier. The size was right, and the price was definitely right but the color is wrong. Mm -hmm. So what I was thinking is maybe you could work your magic on this sure. fixture. Yep, what and, color? Well, I was thinking that we would go with raspberry, the same color as you used on the stencil and that would help tie the bed in yeah. as well. I love that color and I could put a few gold highlights in on of it. Of course too, you could. Did I think you would do this and not put some glam on Gotta it? Gotta put the glitz in. I gotta <laughs> do it. Okay, so you can get that done and then we can get that hung and that mm -hmm. will complete the room. And I'll add my touches and this will be a perfect palace for any princess. Yes.
our friend built this amazing custom tree for our pirate themed boys room. Bill constructed the majority of this tree at his studio, then he brought the pieces here to the house to put it together. The tree is more than any child can dream of and hard for most people to even fantasize about when thinking of decorating a child's room. Lucky for Four Year Home, we have got some incredibly talented friends and Bill pulled it off beautifully. The tree is more than just decoration. It also serves as a tunnel directly into our Neverland room. This turned out fantastic. Well, thank you, Vicki. You know, and when I say work with me, he did all the work. I just kept standing there as he told me what he thought and where his concept was, and I kept going, uh-huh, 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 and he didn't let me down. Now, let's share how you got started and how you created this spectacular tree. Well, after our discussion, we realized it was going to be a little boy's room. Uh, I took the measurements inside the, the, it was almost like a closet with a window. Uh-huh. And uh, then we, I went back and drew the sketches of the tree and then began, took this, all to the shop, to my studio, and sculpted it using uh, EPS foam, mm -hmm. and then it's covered with a hardened latex. I have a, a chemist that actually made some latex for us that, that gets really hard. And the process is almost like uh, creating a, a cast for your arm, uh -huh. where you, you put the latex on, then cloth, you permeate the cloth with the latex, and then more latex on top of that. So layers and layers to layers get and it layers. done. When you get to the top part of your latex, you have an, an opportunity to create different textures. In other words, for the trunk, where you can make it look like bark by putting it on thick and push your fingers or hands in and out or use a brush or a stiplet some way. Uh -huh. On the inside of the tree, we made it look like uh, wood grain by uh -huh. taking a very stiff bristle brush and running down lines like, uh, like the interior of a tree or like a board. Exactly. So it gave us that, then be able to come back and, and airbrush and uh, do wood graining. Then, of course, we carved holes in it. I had to make a hole. One of the uh, needs was to find a place to uh, access the receptacle that's in the closet. So that had to be a little hole. So you have like all the logistics hole. that you have to consider, sure, like air sure. conditioning and it, the it, window. And I love the way you treated the window. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that was going to that was a problem. And I knew we needed to have light because that is a, uh, the tree itself is being brown, mm -hmm. caused it to have a lot of shadows. And so by leaving that and making it look like a knot hole, brought our light in. Speaking of knot holes, we also have another one. Yep. Another one we had to incorporate in there, a big round one that had to be a tunnel. Uh huh, because that leads away to our Neverland because we're working with a Peter Pan theme in here. But like we said, it can grow because as a small child phases out of that Peter Pan stage and wants to, you know, finally grow up, then this tree works just as well, doesn't it? It sure does. And you can take a child from three years old to 13 and beyond because, like you said, with Pirates, maybe in the first uh, elementary, then get into middle school, junior high, whatever. It's more like adventure. I can remember uh, as a child, those three things that intrigued me the most was a tree house, an island, and a cave. This room has it all. It does, and thanks to you, it has all of that. You know, and you can create an absolutely fabulously themed room, but you always have to remember that that room needs to function as a bedroom. And of course you have to have a bed in a room. So for this pirate's bed, I selected linens that were a great blue color and that helped break up so much tan and brown that we had going, but it still has kind of an ocean look to it and a feel. Now you also need to provide storage in a bedroom area. I selected this nice large mule chest for this space. It's got plenty of drawers, beautiful wood grain, and I love this feature about it. This panel in the door is reversible, so I can take this out, flip it around, and use the wicker side for this theme, and then later if we change themes, I can turn it back around. Always look for function and versatility in your furniture. We also added a nice little nightstand, and it has been pre-wired for cable, so you could use it for video games or a TV. Again, a lot of function in that piece of furniture. You want to pick up accessories that help close up that theme idea. Visit your resale shops, maybe an antique shop like I did. I picked up this little black pearl pitcher for less than $20. 
Found a great little tray to put up on the dresser with a world theme. You know, don't spend a lot of money on those accessories because your kids are going to outgrow them. Now, remember good lighting is very essential. I've got a brass lamp here, which is perfect because it doesn't really have a theme, but it does say boat if you put it in the right room. Now, for the floor in this room, I absolutely love the way this carpet looks. I know it looks like sisal or seagrass, but it's actually a nylon carpet. It has a great variation of colors to it, so it also is going to translate into many different themes over the years. For our window treatments, we kept it simple. We made a cornice board, and then we accented it with ropes, and the ropes, again, tie into that great nautical look. So when you're creating space for your kids, remember it is their opportunity to live out their dreams and it's your opportunity to have a little bit of fantasy as well. As you can see, the upstairs of this house has many beautiful decorative paint finishes, and a lot of them are in children's rooms. So as a consumer where you might think, well, my children are going to be rough on these finishes, how on earth am I going to keep those clean? Amazingly, they clean up very easy, much easier than flat latex-based paint, which normally is what most painters will put on your wall. A decorative paint finish will be able to have modeling to it, movement to the finish, maybe a texture in it. All of those things alone will help hide the fact that your surface has some wear and tear on it because your eye is distracted. Whereas on a flat latex based paint, there is nothing to distract the eye. So that alone makes a big difference on how well your room wears. Secondly, most of the paints that decorative painters use, we need to have a sealed surface, which is a much better grade of paint than a flat latex to do our decorative painting on. That alone, plus the modeling and the movement and the additional textures, allow your surface to clean up very easily. It is every bit as easy to clean up as the trim paint in your house. And just think how easy the trim is versus your normal flat latex based paint. It's a lot easier to clean trim than it is the flat paint. So when it comes time to clean something, you would always want to spray onto your cleaning uh, sponge and then maybe try it behind an area to see uh, if there's any problem with the cleaning. Usually there won't be, but test in an obscure area first and then use any ammoniated cleaner to do it. One tip though, do not try to clean any decorative paint finish until it's been dried for 27 days. That gives it a th full cure time before you need to worry about um, any damage to the finish when you clean it. So bottom line is faux finishing is very easy to clean, hide soiling, and is a wonderful technique even in high traffic areas. Wow, today's show was jam-packed with great ideas. I hope you found some inspiration for your own home. But before you run off and start moving around the furniture and redecorating, let's review some of the things we did together today. First of all, dining rooms. Remember, that's the perfect place for a splash of color and a more casual approach. When it comes to the master bedroom, think stylish but relaxed. And when it comes to your kids' room, let their imagination and yours just run wild. Now, next time on For Your Home, this show is for all the guys who watch FYH. I've got a great gentleman's quarters planned for you. It's an entertainment room that includes a bar, plus a guest quarters, a workout room, and a terrific home office. I hope you'll join me next time here on FYH. If you would like additional information about today's guests or project ideas, please visit us on the web at foryourhome.com. We will do our best to help you out.
for your home is made possible by Shaw Floors offers distinctive flooring options to fit a variety of decors. Shaw strives to have a positive impact on the environment by producing recyclable products like Anso Nylon Carpets and Epic Hardwoods. Shaw, where great floors begin. And by Ames. Ames True Timber has offered innovative landscape products since 1774, providing non-powered lawn and garden tools, wheelbarrows and lawn carts, watering products and decorative accessories, including planters. And by Custom Home Furnishings Academy, where the professionals learn to